What's happening, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I am the Al, back with another classic movie review. Creed 3 is going to be out in theaters next month, so we're going to go back and talk about all six Rocky films and the first two Creed movies before the third one is out in theaters. I've already talked about the first four Rocky movies. If you guys haven't seen my review for those, I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can watch them. But today we are continuing on talking about Rocky V that came out in 1990. Let's get into this. So after Rocky V, I'll be honest, I kind of started to lose interest in the franchise. I did really enjoy the first three movies, but Rocky IV was a bit of a letdown for me. And after that, storyline-wise, I thought that was it. What else can you expand on in this franchise? I already thought Rocky III concluded the franchise in a satisfying way. And Rocky IV kind of pushed it a bit further, but still, everything seemed to wrap up. But no, apparently there was another Rocky film that was made. Hence, we have Rocky V. Now, when it comes to this movie, people talk about this one the least. And a lot of people consider it to be the worst film in the franchise. Even Sylvester Stallone himself. Yeah, even he disowned this movie publicly. So, yeah, I was hesitant to watch this movie. But since I saw the previous four, I might as well watch this one, right? And after watching it, yeah, I kind of understand why people don't like this very much. Yeah, this film is a mess. Now, did I think it was awful? No, there are some things here and there that I kind of like. But this is definitely the worst Rocky film so far. So Sylvester Stallone decided to step down from directing and brought back the director of the first Rocky film, John Alvinson. This was his attempt at trying to get Rocky back to its drama roots because he felt like the franchise was getting too over the top and bombastic, which I definitely can admire his attempt, but his writing didn't really reflect the results he wanted. So the movie picks up right where the fourth one left off. We see the aftermath of the fight between Rocky and Drago, and it turns out that Rocky took so many hits from Drago that it caused permanent brain damage to the point where Rocky has to immediately retire to avoid any more life-threatening physical damage. On top of that, when they get back home, Polly somehow accidentally signed away all of Rocky and Adrian's finances, confusing it as documents for tax returns. So, do, do you guys understand why I don't like Polly as a character? Do you guys see why I don't like him? Because he does stupid shit like this. Like, th this is freaking ridiculous. But anyway, so this causes Rocky, Adrian, Robert, and Polly to sell off the last of their belongings and move back to Philadelphia and go back to living a regular life. Rocky decides to take ownership of Mickey's gym and starts teaching boxing lessons, following in the footsteps of Mickey. While that's happening, a promoter slash manager called... George Washington Duke tries to convince Rocky to come out of retirement and face his fighter for the title. But Rocky, with the help of Adrian, refuses his offers constantly to protect his health. Meanwhile, an up-and-coming boxer, Tommy Gunn, comes to Rocky and begs him to train him and become his manager. Rocky is reluctant at first, but he eventually decides to do it and leads to Rocky becoming Tommy's mentor and helps him become undefeated in boxing. However, while all this is happening, Rocky is neglecting his son Robert and not being there for his transition to a new school, refusing to teach him how to defend himself against bullies, and just in general spending time with his son. Oh, and don't worry, we'll, we'll talk about the age skip thing in a second, because that, that, that just blows my mind already. But anyway, one of my biggest issues with this film is that there's too much going on on and there's not enough time to flesh out all of these plot points in this movie like Sylvester Stallone was trying so hard to get back to the roots of the first movie without actually understanding what made the first film so good a lot of people complained that the first two movies were very slow there wasn't too much happening there wasn't a lot of boxing going on but there was a purpose behind that it took its time to develop the characters you know it did a really good job having us being invested in their journey you know all that slow burn stuff had a purpose and this movie didn't take the time to 
thoroughly develop all of these characters. It felt like one thing was happening after the next, and it's just it was just ridiculous. It was also nuts how they just forced a conflict for them to just lose all their riches and move back to Philadelphia just to give them a reason to go back there, you know? Like, I don't have a problem with Rocky going back to Philadelphia, but all this really just felt forced. And it just makes Polly look like an even bigger idiot than he already was. Like, literally just selling all of their riches away? Like, how does that even happen? Like, that's, that's, that, that just doesn't make any sense to me. And then the whole thing with Rocky becoming a mentor to someone. I think that's an interesting concept we haven't seen in a Rocky film before. You know, since, you know, Rocky is forced out of retirement, I would think, you know, the next best thing is for him to become a manager or a trainer. So I think that's the, you know, the concept on paper, I think is really, really good. But once again, the way they executed it, I didn't really feel that much about it. Tommy Gunn, who is played by an actual boxer, Tommy Morrison, which I thought that's kind of cool that they actually got a boxer to be um, to be this character, to be, you know, the person that Rocky trains. But Tommy Gunn as a character is very generic, very boring. There isn't that much to him outside of he just wants to fight. You know, he wants to be undefeated. He wants to be the champion of the world. We never get to know Tommy Gunn personally. We don't get to know that much about his upbringing, where he came from, you know. What's his motivation to becoming the best in the world, you know? Like, he's just a generic boxer. That's all he is. And as far as, like, his personality, he doesn't have that much charisma either. He's just very dry. So the whole dynamic that he had with Rocky kind of fell flat for me. Even though, you know, I feel like Rocky, is, you know, is trying his best to, you know, bring something out of Tommy. But it just didn't really work that well for me. And then let's talk about George Washington Duke. Um, man, this guy is annoying. Probably the worst villain of the Rocky films so far. I've said before that these Rocky films were giving off major wrestling vibes. He definitely reminded me of one of those um, annoying managers that would have talked pieces for the wrestlers. Like that, he was really giving off the energy. But like, he was just so annoying. He's just egging on Rocky so many times in this movie. Like his act was getting old really, really quick. So yeah, I didn't really care about you know him and like his whole his whole ordeal of trying to get Rocky out of retirement to you know to to face one of his fighters or is he trying to become a manager of rocky like i it never was really consistent i guess it's wherever the money is you know where that's where his motivations will go so yeah he just didn't i just didn't like him and then okay yeah let's talk about it uh robert rocky jr this made no sense to me and it blows my mind that stallone and alvinson completely overlook this major continuity issue that when rocky comes back from russia robert is now 12 or 13 years old but when he left to train in russia uh robert was only like nine nine or ten and like rocky was only gone for a few months how did he get this massive growth spur like that that just it blows my mind that they completely ignored that like they like they didn't watch the previous movie like that that just made no sense to me that that's just crazy so now we have this conflict where rocky is neglecting robert and i thought this was completely against rocky's character because you know with the previous movies he was all about his son he always tried to spend as much time with his son as he can even though yes he did have to you know take time to train for his fights or whatever he never ignored his son and i'm not convinced that yeah while rocky is becoming uh you know taking on the manager role with tommy like i don't think that would be enough to completely ignore robert you know and now robert is kind of you know mad at rocky that he's not spending enough time with them and he's getting bullied at school and it, it like it shocks me that rocky never trained robert how to fight like, okay, he, you don't have to uh, mold him to become a boxer, you know, of course, like, I'm with him, you know, wanting Robert to, you know, be more about school and, you know, try to figure out a different career. That's cool. But, like, that should not negate the fact that you should at least teach your son how to defend himself in case there are bullies 
stuff like that. So I just I just didn't like that whole storyline at all. And they do try to hint at some sort of preteen romance between Robert and Jewel, the girl that he meets at school. That that could have been cute, but it doesn't go anywhere. Another thing I didn't like from a directing standpoint was the editing. I thought the editing in this film was very choppy compared to the previous movies. And the way that stuff flowed in this film, it didn't feel very natural. As I said, stuff just went bam, 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 without giving enough time to flesh stuff out. And that was definitely apparent in the editing, especially with the fight scenes. The one thing I hate in fight scenes is quick edits and stuff like that and it, there was a whole bunch of quick edits in this movie and like i i didn't like that now was there any positives in this movie yes um i thought there was certain like dream sequences slash flashbacks that rocky had with mickey that i thought was slightly compelling i guess um it was nice to see you know the, them trying to incorporate mickey somehow in this movie but you know they did it one too many times i felt like there was too many flashbacks with mickey in this movie like if they had like two or three i think it would have been fine but like it felt like there was like four or five times that where rocky was having dream sequences in there and i felt like it was a little too heavy-handed um and I guess I kind of liked the street fight at the very end. So that's supposed to be the big fight of this movie. You know, instead of them just doing a typical boxing match for the previous films, they wanted to mix things up and have Rocky do a street fight against Tommy at the end. Um, which I guess is that's their way of trying to have like a, a finale spectacle without, you know, having Rocky completely go back to the ring. Um, so I once again I commend them for trying to do something different but I thought that fight at the end was really over the top and ridiculous and I guess they're still neglecting the fact that he does have permanent brain damage so they never really explained to what extent can Rocky take hits so him fighting in a ring like that that'll be too much but him getting in a street fight He'll be he'll be fine. His his brain damage won't won't be affected that much. I was like, okay, sure. So yeah, overall, I thought this film was really really messy. I definitely think this is the worst of the Rocky films so far. I do appreciate that Sylvester Stallone was trying something different with this movie, even trying to get Alvinson back, you know, to direct this film, trying to get back to the the roots of the first film. But I feel like in doing that, he completely misunderstood what made the Rocky film so good. It wasn't the fact that, you know, the tone was starting to get more over the top and there was more spectacle. It was that the character moments were really good, in spite of the fact that it, that it was getting more over the top. You know, we could forgive a lot of things, but if the character moments were really good, we could, we could forgive the fact that, you know, stuff started to get more bombastic. But... They didn't spend enough time developing all the characters and plot points. I thought the editing in this movie was very, very choppy. I thought things felt very rushed and contrived. There was major continuity issues. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of this film. So overall, I will give Rocky V a C-. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Rocky V. What did you guys think about it? Did you guys love it? Did you guys hate it? Did you guys think it was okay? Comment your thoughts down below and let me know. So the next film I will be covering in this franchise is Rocky Balboa. So tune in for that when it comes out. But if you guys enjoyed this review, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And please hit the bell if you want to be notified of future videos I'll be doing. But that's all I have for you, Rocky fans, and I will see you guys next time. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.